In the mystery of creation, following in the way of Jesus, and deep within each of us is the Spirit of God. We light this candle, its flame, a reminder of God's warmth and love for all God's people. God in whom we live and move and have our being. From sea to sea to sea, we gather in prayer. From generation to generation, we sing. On this anniversary, we give thanks for your care, guidance, and correction. In this heritage of trust, we pray for this united church and for faithful living on this land, our source of life, living word, and bonding love. Amen.
peace be with you. And also with you. May offer each other a sign of peace. 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 Oh, good day. Welcome. Oh, that's not my welcome slide. That's a, I don't know how that got in there. Let me change it. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, you got the camera on that slide, Ian. Yes, okay. I'll, let me move that to another slide here. Oh, well, gracious sakes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you saw the news uh, this weekend. Uh, there was a, a young chap um, uh, with dyslexia from Quebec. Uh, who does Rubik's Cubes, and that, those, that wall there is nothing but Rubik's Cubes. And he's, as you can see, designed the Montreal Canadiens, which is his team, of course. And just to the left, I couldn't get all of the Winnipeg Jets in there, but that blue one there is the Winnipeg Jets, but you can't see that. So, uh, um, but anyway, there you have it. Uh, so we want to welcome one and all on this Pride and Union Sunday on June the 6th, 2021, and uh, a special day uh, on the church calendar for all kinds of reasons, as you can see. And uh, the sermon, of course, is entitled Denominational Wanderings, and so you can kind of gather where I'm headed. I'm gonna leaning more towards Union Sunday celebration this week as the United Church celebrates its birthday. Um, I want to draw your attention to the flowers over here um, on the uh, stand here, just outside the chancel area in the nave. And uh, those flowers are given in loving memory of Mr. H. Douglas Ritzy uh, by his son, uh, Andrew Ritzy. So thank you, Andrew, for remembering your dad. Your dad's birthday, I believe, would, it would be within the, uh, this week at some point. Some, sometime this week. Uh, he would have been about 103. And Doug, Doug Ritzy, of course, sang in our church choir for well over 60 years. And uh, we remember him fondly. And we have a lovely window in the sanctuary in his memory as well. So we thank Andrew for those flowers. And uh, we also want to extend our deepest sympathy to those who've lost loved ones this week, namely Yvonne Sampson, who lost her brother uh, this past week and then also to Stephanie Colthart, Stephanie and Peter Colthart. Stephanie lost her dad uh, this week in uh, Truro. And uh, so we want to be thinking of those folks and their families as they mourn the passing of their loved ones. Well, it's not just the United Church's birthday, it's also Tim Dean's and Peggy Morell's birthday. Uh, I don't know, I think there's enough birthdays we could probably Sing happy birthday, couldn't we, uh, Madam Maestro there? Yeah, okay. Do you want to finish reading them? Oh, sure, I can finish reading them. That's a good idea. Uh, we've got Tim and Peggy, Tim Dean and Peggy Morell for today. Kevin Robarts is uh, coming up on the 9th. And then Daisy Jansen on the 10th. And uh, Madison Orser on the 12th. So those are birthdays for this week. So we want to wish them all a very happy birthday. Well, Madam Maestro, let us sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Tim and Peggy, Kevin, Daisy and Madison, happy birthday to you. Yeah, we wish you all a very happy day. Thank you. And with me today, uh, my name's Trent Cleveland Thompson, of course, most of you know that. Uh, and with me is Jade uh, Fraser, our songster, uh, Varane Tabuma, our liturgist, and of course, Jenny Trites on the piano, the keyboard, the, and the organ as well, and our music director, and uh, Ian McDonald. We're pleased to see his back and uh, after being in hospital last week, and they were able to fix them all up. So Ian, welcome, welcome back to your stool there as you uh, film and record our service for today. So we want to thank all those who participate. Also, Colleen Esther Books will be coming up uh, in a few moments' time after I finish the notices here. And I'll be exiting for a moment so we don't have more than five in the sanctuary and shook them up and, and do the Minute for Mission, a special Minute for Mission today on Anniversary Sunday of the United Church of Canada. Uh, also, just a reminder, if you know of any high school graduates, let the church office know. And our congregational meeting we have coming up tomorrow evening, that's Monday night, 
on June the 7th at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. And you can also call in. You should already have all that information that you need for that meeting as, as well as a, uh, an attachment which has uh, the information uh, about the, um, the team, uh, the transition team's profile that they prepared for the position uh, of the new minister for, for the transition years. So there you have that's coming up on Monday night, so don't forget that. And Wednesday, of course, our Zoom coffee party at 11 o'clock. We send out that Zoom information uh, Wednesday morning. And Kirk session, you'll be meeting a week from this Tuesday. So the June the 29th at 7.30, not a week, sorry, two weeks. It's three weeks, is it? Anyway, it's June the 29th, Tuesday. Um, Kirk session at 7.30. And that could be in person or it could be via Zoom or a conference call. And a reminder that our summer gatherings for July, all of July, including the first Sunday in August, which is August the 1st, uh, will be at St. Matthew's Church. So we're delighted to be able to join the folk at St. Matthew's and the Reverend Betsy Hogan uh, is the minister there. And uh, so we'll be, you'll, be, you'll be very pleased uh, when, you, when you join with the folk at St. Matthew's and get to meet and get to know Betsy a little bit more as well. And Betsy also will be our pastoral care person uh, while I'm away in July. So uh, we want to thank Betsy as well for that. And then August 8th, oh, I should go back there, August 8th and 20 to the 29th, we have our own folk. We'll be back here at Fort Massey, assuming we're in person. But if not, we'll be online. Well, it'll be a hybrid, one of the two, three, or what have you. And so on August the 8th and the 15th will be Allison McDonald. Our clerk of session will be leading in our service. And then the latter two Sundays in August is our own Varane Tabuma will be uh, leading you in worship. So all good things to look forward to in the summer. As we, and we hope for a, a good summer, do we not? And uh, so we want to say thank you for your support uh, to the work of Fort Massey Church and also for the work of the Mission and Service Fund. And I'm going to let uh, Colleen come up now as I exit. I'm going to put my mask on and let her come in. And there. There we go. Good morning, everyone. True or false, the United Church of Canada was formed in 1925, in part so the founding denominations, Methodist, Presbyterian, and Congregational, could combine their finances to do more mission work in Canada and around the world. If you guess yes, you are right. From the very beginning, our United Church was formed out of a desire to come together and serve others like Jesus did. Through mission and service, we have been helping to save and transform lives, inspire meaning and purpose, and build a better world for 96 years. Today, we are as committed as ever. Together, we turn compassion into action every day. To put it simply, we help. In Canada, we help people in need by supporting, uh, by supporting homeless shelters, food banks, soup kitchens, and refugee programs. We reach out to young people on campuses and through camping. We care for people who are sick or at the end of their lives by supporting addiction, mental health, and counseling services and hospice care. Globally, we help people access clean water, food, and medical care. We support skills, training, and economic development. We help with peacemaking and sustainable agriculture efforts. We provide disaster relief and advocate for the rights of those who all too often don't get a say. 
like children and migrant workers. Locally, we subsidize the theological schools and educational and retreat centers. We support events that promote spiritual development and personal reflection. We inspire new and innovative ministries and sustain communities of faith that are remote, that are, oh my, that are remote or in need. Globally, we support the church organizations that work with theological schools, offering practical training in agriculture and health. It's a win-win situation. We trust that when people are in tune with their meaning and purpose, they will naturally want to help change lives and make the world a better place for all. Thank you for all your gifts through the mission and service. Your support makes a world of difference. I'm going to dance off. <laughs> celebrate your love for all on this Pride Sunday. We remember the Church has not always done so. Even our United Church, who celebrates 96 years of union today. We acknowledge the harm that continues to be done in your name today. Today, especially, we remember the indigenous children of the former residential school system. As we bring our concerns, we bring also a renewed commitment to interrupting prejudice and racism and practicing, solid and practicing solidarity. We press on together until people of every sexual orientation, gender identity and skin color can live freely and without fear, receiving the love and support all people deserve. Thanks be to those men and women who have helped us see, who have helped us see you in their lives, guiding us and helping us to live in peace and in harmony in Jesus' name. Praying together with with your with your uniting church across the country, the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Our reading this morning comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. They met constantly to hear the Apostles teach and to share the common life, to break bread and to pray. A sense of awe was felt by everyone, and many, and many portents and signs were brought about through the Apostles. All the believers agreed to hold everything in common. They began to sell their property and possessions and distribute to everyone according to his need. One and all kept up their daily attendance at the temple, and, breaking bread in their homes, they shared the, meal, the meals with, un, with unaffected joy, as they praised God and enjoyed the favor of the whole people. And day by day, the Lord added new converts to their number. Offer this wisdom for the journey. And may we walk in its light. Twenty-eight years ago, I became a member of the United Church of Canada clergy. Prior to that, I served my first four years of ministry in the Baptist Church, and then another five years I served United Church congregations as a Baptist supply while I jumped through all the various hoops involved in the transition. And then at the end of May, 1993, in front of crowds at Maritime Conference in Sackville, New Brunswick, I became a fully accredited member of the United Church of Canada clergy. Today, as I've already stated, is Union Sunday, and 96 years ago, the church itself came into being. Just think, we're we're that close to being 100 years old. And so all of this led me to, to thinking about the, well, the different roots which led us to the church today. Some of us are born into a denomination, you know, much like we join the political party of our parents. My dad voted Tory and my grandfather, and, and I'll be Tory till the day I die. Many people used to vote that way, but of course it's not as common today. It is clear from most elections that the undecided now make up a larger group than those tied to one political party for life. And in the same way, not all people stay with the same church for life. A Baptist girl marries a Roman Catholic fellow. They want to attend the same church. And not all do that. Some families, well, they split up and they, they go different places each Sunday, like Bill and Brenda Fong used to. Remember, he, he sang in our choir while she sang weekly in, in the Presbyterian Church Choir just down the street here. Both very dedicated and loyal members of, of two different denominations. But for those who decide they want a single church, they may feel very at ease in either of their home churches and then, and then decide to choose something new. I began life myself as a baptized member of the United Church of Canada, but we, we strayed over to the Baptist Church because it had a, a, a Sunday church school in our community. We had we just moved into this new community, and, and, and the local United Church in the village was caught up in that fad of, of the 1960s, uh, some of you may remember, closing down all of the community churches to amalgamate into into one large town church. And so, of course, our village, like so many in the province, closed its doors. So my parents started going to the local United Baptist Church just down the road. The church thought it 
a revival had begun when nine of us children all strayed in uh, to church one Sunday with seven more from across the street. And the church was, was very similar, fortunately for us, in, in worship and theology to most United Church congregations. It, it wasn't your typical Baptist church even in its day. It was much more progressive and a place where people were, were free to think for themselves. But then it voted back in the 1990s not to do any gay weddings. And my mom, my mother was not happy about that, I remember. She said, we, we don't marry anyone, she called to say. We're mostly over 60 and there are no young people, so why, why vote on it at all? But they were instructed by the powers on high to hold a vote and and she might even have lived with the result I don't know except that people people made comments very homophobic and and hurtful and and she decided to leave and my parents moved back to their United Church roots well many people it's no big secret switch denominations for all kinds of reasons can't stomach the minister looking for a church with better music, more comfortable pews or chairs, want a, want a good nursery for the children, all kinds of reasons. And we're kidding ourselves if we think people join our church because they have studied the theology and the issues of the United Church and then deliberately decided that this is where they fit. People rarely do that even at times in the history of the church when new denominations have formed, I expect that many people joined, not because they had deep heartfelt convictions, but for a, a vast variety of reasons. The early Christians did not immediately have to choose a denomination. After the experience of Pentecost, which we celebrated just a couple of weeks ago, the early church was still a part of, of the Jewish faith, a fringe group to be sure, but still members of the Jewish community. And many of them continued to attend synagogue. They saw no reason why they could not be devout Jews and, and follow the teachings of Christ. After all, Jesus himself had lived and died a Jew. But as the good news began to be preached to the Gentile as well as the Jew, decisions had to be made. In the early days, we read in the book of Acts, they met constantly to hear the apostles teach and to share the common life, to break bread and to pray. These are the words of the early church. All whose faith had drawn them together held everything in common. These are the days when some people shared everything, when they were not a religion of the majority. They had watched Jesus, you know, die the death of a criminal, and, and many of the early Christians suffered the same fate. And so to decide to be a member of this band of Christians had to be a deliberate and a conscious decision. If you wandered in by impulse, you'd likely get out in a hurry. It was not the socially acceptable thing to do. But they were not all convinced that to remain within the Jewish faith was possible. And so divisions began and have continued, of course, throughout the history of the church. John Wesley, there he is there on the screen there. John Wesley was a member of the Church of England. He, along with his brother Charles, that great hymn writer, while at Oxford, founded a club which became known as the Holy Club. Farain, you could probably tell us all about this. You're a good Methodist. Uh, they lived according to a method they devoted set times to study, to, to prayer, to, to visiting prisoners, and so on. And they quickly be, became nicknamed Methodists. And Wesley began to preach and organize converts into societies. And he saw all of this as operating 
within the Church of England. But more and more ordained ministers became necessary and no bishop would ordain them. And so Wesley, along with another priest, began to ordain themselves, beginning the break with the established church. And this was the beginning of the Methodist Church, one of the founding churches of our United Church. One of those rare times in history when churches have united rather than dividing. And so we come today, you and I, inheritors of a religious tradition which stretches back to the early church with roots in the Methodist tradition, in the Presbyterian and congregational denominations, and with individual roots in other churches and denominations. And we come together as a family of faith some of us having made a deliberate decision to join, having left other denominations permanently or temporarily for a great variety of reasons. Some of us having looked around and found a spiritual home right here in the corner of Queen and Tobin. But we will only be a family if we understand the different journeys of faith which we have made. One professor used to say, if your experience and theology conflict, it is your theology which must change. For example, you may believe that good people never suffer, that going to church and doing the right things will guarantee you a smooth ride in life. That is your theology. That's your belief. But when your child is suddenly very ill, and you, if you've ever watched any of the IWK telethons like Sundays, the Todays, you have seen many real life examples of people who have lived with that. Then your theology, it's your theology that must change. Some people want to deny the experience, you know, it's not happening to me, God would not let this happen, or, or I must be a really rotten person for this to happen to me. But gradually, ever so gradually, as they grow in their faith, they will begin to accept that it is their theology which has betrayed them. And then they will begin to to change their beliefs and accept their experience. I don't know about you, but I'm, I am very uncomfortable around people who follow a church or minister blindly. You know, people who never disagree and who often deny their experiences of life because their theology does not allow them the freedom to question. That's one of the many reasons why I'm glad to be part of, of this denomination, because this is a denomination which does not ask us to deny our experiences, although admittedly it's getting trickier as the national church seems to be shifting a little bit more to the right and with its governance involving fewer people ever closer to having bishops in all but name, I would, think, I would suggest to you. But we come today with many different experiences of life. We are at various points in the journey of faith. Some of us have lived through the death of a person very close to us, whether it's an aging parent or, or one of our friends or children. And such experiences have changed us, have forced us, to look at our faith. Others have stood up bravely for some of our beliefs and been shot down, wounded in the war of the world, and not very sure if we ever want to speak out again. We're not convinced that there is even a desire 
for justice in society. Most people prefer to follow the crowd, buckle under and allow peer pressure to rule their lives. Some of us have been badly hurt by the world. We've been abused by parents, coped with mental health issues, lived through painful divorces, have dealt with alcoholism personally or drug addiction or in our family situations. Some of us are the walking wounded, frightened of what could happen next. You see, all such experiences have affected us. And so our theologies, our beliefs will differ. We're never going to agree on everything. But we should become a family for each other, a family that is able to celebrate the joyous moments of our congregational life as well as being there at those difficult moments. And we will only become a family when we begin to share our faith journeys with each other. And when we feel free, you know, to answer that familiar question, how are you? With truthful answers. I'm having a hard time coping. And many of us would say that in the midst of a pandemic that has already lasted too long. Friends, we are the family of God. We are a congregation of the United Church of Canada. We come for different reasons. We come from backgrounds which have shaped us. May we take the time to share our faith May we be a community ready to accept each other and to minister to one another. Amen and amen. Uh, thank you, Trent. Uh, let us affirm our faith. Sing together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We're called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our Judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God.
time has now come for us to leave this sacred place. As we do, may we embrace the challenges of our lives and our world. So go in peace, embraced by the light and warmth of our gathering online. Go in love, ready again to struggle on. Go in beauty, shining forth like a lamp for freedom. Go into this week, held together by the love of God, clothed with the nature of Jesus, our companion, reinforced by the strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen, and may it be so.